we've got some examples of our books and um, some diagrams. So as we talk, please feel free to have a look through our books. Please note that we are putting our books out there, so please be forgiving. You know, we have been running around school going, please give some books and teach my people looking at them, you know. So please be kind. And um, we are from Wood Church C of E. I'm Laura, the head of East Stage 2. And our brother's assistant, Rianne, is giving out the book. She's our English subject leader at the moment. Um, to give you a bit of context about our school, uh, we're based on the Wood Church estate right at the top by the church. In April 2013, we went into RI. Right. We knew we were going to go into RI. Right. It wasn't going well. We'd lost our mojo completely. You know when the, the most optimum time for them to turn up? That's when they turn up. And it didn't go well. We knew what was going to happen. Since our inspection, it was, to put it in a different way, quite a big kick of the bum for us really, to look at our reading and our writing and what's actually happening in our school. Staffing has changed considerably in our school and we had to look at ourselves very, very harshly really to say, do you know what was going wrong? And we had some staff that said, do you know what, we can't cope with this anymore, we're not going to be staff to take it forward, so they left. Um, our data has shown some improvement. Now, if you're anything like me on a course and you see a school presenting and say, look at how we've done, you get straight on for their data. If you go and look at our data, please treat it sensitively. And um, last year, I don't know if you know which you see me, we had one of the worst years that we've ever had. Um, we lost a member of our staff. She passed away to cancer at the age of 38. And that was in the February. And we lost a half a term. So if you look at our data, please treat it sensitively. That's all I'm going to say on the subject because I don't really want to dwell on it anymore. Um, since then, we've had a range of monitoring procedures got in. And from October 2014, the LA review came through and 100% of our teaching was rated as good, whereas it was 69% in the offset. So we can see that we've had quite a big impact there. What have we done? So what we're going to do quickly, we're going to look at the impact our Elite Sentence Types have. I'm very aware that a lot of you will have attended training for our Elite Sentence Types. And I must put in a disclaimer, he has tweeted me several times over the weekend to say that there are a range of books and that's available and that bundles are available as a discounted purchase. I've done my bit. Um, we're going to look at the power of reading and how we knitted the two together really. So how we changed our reading structures and how we knitted in the sentence types to have a full impact. And it's improved standards. So if you can see the books going through the school, um, we've changed our marking policy. Our books now for us have a feel good factor and children are very, very proud of their work. Um, Alan Pete sent us that, and this is lifted straight from his website. You know, we're not telling you anything different. Um, Link them to exciting writing projects. What we found in school is that our writing got very, very dull. Nothing against Ros Wilson and the big rights, but it got to the point we had a lot of disengaged body writers that were being made to write. 45 minutes and the fact that we put a candle on and some lovely clothes and music didn't really help them at all. They didn't give them any structure, they still hated writing, regardless of candle and said to music. Uh, we gave them real purpose and we linked them to real audience. <coughs> and we also involved them in exciting writing projects and we modeled them. We started using them ourselves in our letters going home and things like that. So we can say, actually, look, we're doing it too, our writing isn't great, so we're taking it on as well. And we linked it to reading, but not all the time. So we've linked it to our power of reading text, but we also have a very vested interest in Wood TV that reading is for pleasure, that reading is actually a nice thing to do. If it's reading your iPad, reading your Kindle, that reading is fun. It can be used to learn from, but it also can take you to another little world, and it is fun. There we put a link in. Now I know a lot of people when we came to the teach me were very interested in linking sentence types to levels. Alan Peake has um, a progression through the sentence types. And I know Doug from Townfield put their progression map out on Twitter. We've got a progression map, but every school is different. I was looking at Townfield's progression map through the census text. It's very, very different to ours. What they've got in year four, we've got in our year six, and we're at different starting points. So you have to decide as a school what you're going to do with them. But there's the link to this one, and um, so we can go through it. <coughs> the don't list. And we're very, very conscious of this. And we felt for this don't list where we got the census type but we've got some other books there so people want to look at them. We saw these census types and because there's a new grammar test coming in, we're like, oh brilliant, we'll just do a two-way sentence and that will just teach adjectives and nouns and that'll do it. And it didn't. It taught them adjectives and nouns, but 
but it didn't put them into context for writing. So please don't turn them into worksheets. Don't spend a whole lesson on sentence type. <coughs> turn the children off to it. It tends to us, now we've changed our literacy lessons around as well, that they're more like the good old mental maths lesson, maths lesson where you have the input main lingering. So we have a connect activity. So we have a little mini starter. And in there we might say, you have a tree. Give me two A sentences to describe the tree. The tree is in the forest. Give me that two A sentence then into a four activity sentence. So we're doing little activities to build and don't even contextualise them. Teach them in context, link them to a topic. If you decontextualise them, sorry, you lose them. Okay, the writing process. As you're going round, you might see in our books that we build to a writing process. This is what we were doing. So what we do now is we have, it takes us ages to do a piece of writing. Absolutely ages, and we're okay. About two weeks, can yet. About two weeks. And um, what we do, stage one, is we read a wabble, what a wabble looks like. Good old Jason Van Barle looks like. And we also read a wabble, what a wabble looks like. So what we're not looking at. We annotate the features, so we might put a piece of writing on some big paper, put it on the iPad so they draw all over it. We give them the success criteria and they pull it apart. And that slowly but surely is paying dividends for us. One of my lower ability, we see children in my class actually put his hand up the other day and went, oh, this is just written all in the first person. And we went, oh, yeah. And then, you know, the one person who did a little dance in the corner. Then we plan. So you might see in the books that we use quite big planning sheets. And the planning is very, very structured, okay? It's differentiated. Some people might have sentence openers within that plan. Some people might just have more of a blank version of their ability. We use genre-specific success sheets, that's what we're saying, um, and they're linked to their success criteria for the lesson. Then we pull in the sentence types, and we choose the right sentence type for the genre. I fell into the trap of having all my sentence types on the board, and one of my little ones, Lauren, who's going around with one of us, going around I fell into the trap of, I looked in a science book, and all of her sentence types were in the science investigation because she was writing. And the classic line, some people found this interesting, investigation interesting, others did not. Absolutely nothing, but she thought because she had to put her sentence type in, that's what was happening. So please teach them in context. And then, this is Alan Peter, if you've been on his train, bring in your mental language, bring in your terminology. So look, in that sentence, you've got an embedded clause, you've got a relevant clause. Therefore, they know how to use the sentence in their writing. Then we bring in the technicalities. And that way, it's sort of trick feeding it in. They're actually using it in their writing so they can see that they can do it, which for our children in church TV is a big thing. It's a lot of very resilient to their living. Then we bring in the language. Well, actually, what you've got there is an embedded clause around a main clause. And they're like, oh, oh, really? And it's that kind of confidence growth. We redraft, and then they do the final write. So it takes absolutely ages, but the quality of what's coming through is really, really improving. Um, the impacts, oh, here we are, here are some sentence types. These are some of the sentence types we've got from our artwork, and we link them to the power of reading text. So this is Traction Map, I don't know if any of you have read Traction Map in year two. And this is Cave of Year Two. Traction Map has a smelly, smelly blue sweat part of the and colourful six like trousers. Straight away can tell us where the nouns, where the adjectives were, but had a complex sentence or a more complex sentence meaning is that in his writing. And can tell us that where were the nouns of the you know, adjectives use commas in the right place. This one, this is an outside inside sentence. If you know the sentence types, we're sentence type nodes, so I um, <coughs> these were linked to stay where you are then leave, so it was a World War One topic. And Mrs. Milchin is the character that doesn't like anybody in the street. Um, I smiled lightly at Mrs. Milchin. I felt my rage burning inside. So Tia, in year six, if you have met Tia, she is like another version of Kevin and Perry. Um, she's writing in role as Alfie. She's linked it to a topic, she's linked it to a text. She has purpose and she has content to a writing straight away. So, and we have a range of punctuation. So good old AF5 and AF6 are being tested off by those say, and AF1 content. Um, impact of it, this is this autumn term. Year two have made 3.5 points of progress this term. Year four, 1.7. Year four, we think that is a brilliant hit because they were the class that actually lost their teachers. So they're trying to get back into school mode. So they've done really, really well. Year six, 2.3. And our boys actually outperformed the girls for the first time in a very, very long time. And if you met the lads in our class, 
you can see again while we're just. Um, and then we're going to do a reading, so I'm going to hand over to you. You put I'm just, I'm just watching the clock and hoping that we get this over here. Um, our <laughs> piece came first to our school. Minutes ago? Oh, okay. oh I've only got a minute. So our piece came first and we didn't have a context for it really. We were wasting our time on texts like Roald Dahl and things like that, which I love Roald Dahl, which we did with pleasure. It's not a foreign text. So our deputy head went out and sourced power reading for us, and it's all about these quality texts and teaching through art, through drama, um, and it takes you on a journey. It's not standing in front to deliver. The children, they are with you, they're on board, and they engage in texts. Um, they take you over a period of several weeks, and as I say, the children don't just read 10 pages a day, they don't just read pages you know, 4 to 17 on their own, silent to being quiet. They're active and they're really immersed. And what it did with Alan Pete was it gave us the context because the children were in that world. I've got a hand on heart saying, when this first came in and I was given a book, I went, ugh, I'm not reading that rubbish. Street channel by the early I think I read it in year five and I hated it. <coughs> and I did power of reading Street Child and I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And it's because I saw that text through the eyes of the child. I went on that journey as a child. And anyone who's got a child of the seven who's watched Frozen 47 million times, what do they see in this film? It shows you what they see in that book. You're on that journey with them. It's fantastic. Just put through one. Yeah, it's really um, the key approaches <laughs> of people lots of the children said, I wanted to step with me at this point. Um, I asked Ella in my class what they thought uh, of power of reading. It's like we're going on an adventure. Lovely Ella, let me write that down. Um, uh, uh, our year four child, Brilliant Boy, he loves using art. He will you will make collages, you will sketch, and you'll make story maps, you'll make large play plans as part of power of reading. And he said, I love art, it helps me visualise what I'm writing about. And I was like, brilliant! <laughs> Jotted it all down. Just put through. Yeah. Uh, reading aloud is a key approach. When you sign up for Power of Reading, it is subscription and you do get access to planning and one copy of the book. And there's a reason for that. You do the reading. There isn't a class set and you don't have children reading with you. And Power of Reading makes no apologies that you will be reading to 20 to 25 minutes at a time. Our children didn't have the stamina at first. After two minutes, oh, oh, we go to the toilet, oh. But now we've got them as listeners. They will listen. They miss. Just do, just do one more page. Go on, just one more. <laughs> and they're with us, and their stamina for reading and for listening is building. They hear the language from you. So this week we will cover bedraggled and bewildered. Of course, everything now is bedraggled and bewildered. And it will be for the next two weeks because they've got a nice new shout word and they want to use it. Brilliant. Yeah, and because you're on that journey, <coughs> read it to them, they buy into it, they pick up the language. Um, a next key approach which really encourages and promotes the Alpha sentence types is the bus tour because you're getting the language through them. I've got a year six group with children <coughs> 2B to 5A, and these questions are open to both of those children. Granted, their responses are very different where it opens the book to those children. My 2B child is not afraid of the text that we're reading because book talk is open to too. They've got that relationship with the text. Uh, they're just examples of some questions. That's the impact of power of reading. But most importantly for me is the next slide. Um, these really for our children at Wood Church at the top and they would be yeah, all right, miss. All right, yeah, all right, miss. Carry on, miss. And now, through power of reading, I have a room some days full of um, wizards, witches, whatever we're taking, whatever role we're taking on. And it's <coughs> and because it transforms them and it immerses them in the text, their writing is so much better. So, so much better. And it's because they've got this context. So they've got the skill of the Alan Pete sentence type. <coughs> they've got this little word that we've created through the power of reading. And they're so much better for it. And I really love the approach and love what the world was at the JC. Around the room, we've got the time we're going to finish up now, so I think that's a special one. Just to finish off, this is a piece from the year six of the boys. We were moderated last year. Mm -hmm. This is finished now. <laughs> this is um, year six. This is our big finish. Sorry. Um, I'm not going to read it to 
which will obviously improve that percent. Um, we were moderated last year uh, as part of the moderation process. And being an RI, you get that. <coughs> um, and we did really well to pick ourselves up once. We actually did all right. And the key comment that we got was our readers were writers and our writers were readers. And this piece of work exemplified it beautifully. This was from Harry in year six. Harry's been retweeted to by Alan Pete. It's another good thing. We've got a really, really good piece of work. He will retweet it out there for you, which is really, really interesting. Based on saying where you are, the link, the sentence types we put in were at same as and some others. The context, obviously, was World War One, but we adapted an idea from 50 ways to retell Cinderella. So it was a recipe for retelling uh, Cinderella. So it was your perfect hero and all the things you need. And that was going through that writing process. That piece of work just really exemplifies what we can actually get our children to. And for children for us, that are children from the woody, as they're known, which we hate, absolutely hate, this piece of work for them just shows what they can actually achieve. So we hope it was of some interest to you. If you could pass our books back to the front, as we said, I'll say our children, and this is our evidence trail, we'll come find you and go quickly in the meeting.